Hey everybody, uh, Coach Hart here, System Basketball, Just making sure we're going live here. So if you could see me, hear me, you're in the room, either in the Facebook group or on the YouTube channel, you can comment. Heard the feedback on my YouTube channel here, so I know I'm live now and it's coming in loud and clear. So um, welcome everybody. Hope everybody's doing well. Um, tonight I'm going to discuss um, creating two-way drives for drive and kick base offenses. Um, been running dribble drive motion offense since 2008, and primarily it is a middle penetration offense. It's designed to create gaps and, and be able to get you to go both ways. But when the ball's in certain situations, we're opening up a gap and we're trying to drive through those double and triple gaps. And it's typically a certain direction that you're going in those. But tonight I'm gonna show a few ways that you can change, change schematically some things to make your players be able to on the catch go left or right instead of always attacking that big double or triple gap so i'm gonna bring up i'm gonna bring up a board here so that we can see a little bit of x's and o's and explain what i'm talking about so traditional dribble drive spacing is going to look like this in a four out one in setting so point guard's going to be in the slot area Shooting guards or two is going to be there. Another guard's going to be here. And another guard's going to be here. And your five is here. How you adjust up here and stuff is a little bit different. So one of the concepts tonight that I want to talk about with you guys is the button hook. And the button hook takes the four and brings them into the nail area. So by doing this, by doing this, we bring them here, and one's kind of gonna be now centered, and the four is gonna go there. So now when we get here, you're gonna see two players in a line. So now if we're in the middle of the floor, and you put X4 out here guarding. Put X4 out here guarding four. Okay. And now X1's guarding one. But if one drove this way, four is just going to escape cut out the opposite way. So now that puts X4 in a decision making. Do I help on this or do I stay? And this is a nice little reverse pivot pass for jump shots so as you can see here if they dribbled this way four would escape out that way so instead of having, having them side by side up top and having this situation so if we're like this normally x4 sitting right here two x2 sitting here three x3 got your five you got x5 so the double gap is between one and two so they're really only dribbling right if they went left here it'd probably turn into the pitch game or you wouldn't even do that you would probably pass to the four and make a cut to get this x4 out of the way so that we can get our drive and kick game going so again there it's called a button hook and what what to doug no learn it from doug, watching doug novak's teams and listening to him speak um it's really good against like pack line but what he does and i haven't really done it yet and mess with it but i think it might get called illegal screens on us so the four kind of comes here like I said, and now we're going to play. But if X5 is in the middle, they get three players in a line, and they just kind of seal seal post that player. 
So when they drive here, if they're seal posting, it creates a lane right into the post. Most of the time, we're just keeping the player in the dunker spot. Um, college game, they don't really call that a legal screen, but I think in the high school game, they might. So mess around with that. But that's that's the button hook. And with the button hook, you can do a few other things. Um, you can mess around with who you put in the nail. So let's say we want to put three there and create a different player in the help. Then we would just fan four, and now we're just playing. So you can move around who's here. You can even put your five here, and then move your four over here to the wing and let them kind of conquer and play both to get more of a five-out alignment. So that would be one, five, four, two, three. So this would be like a two-sided break here. So if they drove this way, five would go this way. If they drove this way, five would escape out that way. Um, so the, the concept will work four out or five out, but the preferred spacing on that is probably four out, one in. The next one I was going to show you is a quick. So a quick's been around a long time. And a quick is just taking your corner players and getting them the ball on the wing. Most of the time we fill strong side corner on any pass to the wing on from one to two, but we're gonna take our one and go to the opposite corner. So we would have two here, post in the dunker, point guard would be here, three would be here, four would be here. Four is not gonna come over. We're gonna keep that double gap spacing here and now Two has the ability to drive baseline or middle. So that's a two-way drive. Okay, so it's just a just a quick entry and get the ball to the player. So you can do that off the pass, or you could do it off the dribble. How would you get it off the dribble? Just dribble over here to the wing, a little push action, and now one. They're no middle in you, like teams like to do. Say, we're going to keep it, keep it no middle. Well, now they have the baseline drive. And then you got tee up, drift, slot skips, and all that good stuff. Or they could have come back middle on them. Okay. Now, where the two-way drive doesn't necessarily exist in the dribble drive. You can do it, but if, if we're in the, the basic dribble drive system, and we're running, and we ran, we dribbled, we picked the ball up, have nothing else to do with it but two lifting. We've all been taught that the point guard fills the corner. Okay? Now, based upon where you've learned or what you've done, old way would have been now the fives here on this, on the pickup. I don't teach that. I keep the five low, and the only time they're going to flash is on that backdoor cut from two. And here's the reason why. They get in the way on this because they got to get to this side when they dribble. That's going to get all mushed up and, and crowded. So your, your whole center area is, is crowded. Also, you can't set up two-way drives. And I'm going to show two ways to set up the two-way drives, and you guys can take to your programs and decide how you want to mess with it. So if we have two with the ball here and one here, we got a, we got a corner player, got our post, we got another corner player, we got a slot. So we're single gapped between two and one, but we're middle, we got a double gap to the middle. So if X1's here, X2's here, two's real, real choice really is only to either swing it or if they straight line drive, that's a right-hand drive, not to the middle. Majority of the time, we're telling our players to get to the middle, and then we're reading the action on the kickbacks and the kickups on the, on the weak side, and five is relocating. So on this, by not bringing your five to the strong side and keeping them, which you're supposed to do until the ball passes this midline, that's when five should come over. 
the two has the ability to drive right to the basket on that no middle coverage that a lot of teams are starting to employ. Okay. So if two goes like this and that's straight to the basket, I wouldn't necessarily have five do this. I would probably, they're kind of coming right at them at a straight drive. Just keep them in the dunker spot. If they go this way here, if they kind of arc it more towards the baseline, then you would have them come to the tee up dotted line area. Okay. But what I like is another Doug Novak concept. And I really like this a lot. Okay. Now, it, it really works well if you have some guards that can post up as well. So this is mainly common action, like if you do. So now we're just going to do the same thing, but say our point guard comes there and we lift. A slight tweak now is what's going to happen. Two has the ball. One is going to, it's called penetrate, pitch, and post. So now you have your same alignment, but instead of one cutting to the corner, they're going to go post up. So now... As we did with the button hook concept, and we're escaping off the dribble, our spacing is like this. If two drives baseline, one escapes above. So if X1 helps on that, it's an easy reverse pivot back to one, creating a long closeout situation. If two went here, they would just naturally fill corner and five would come across. So those, those are the, the couple of concepts with it. And I have a little bit of video to show you on button hook and quick that I'm going to show with you. But those are just slight tweaks, slight variations of drive and kick philosophy, whether you're from, if you're from the drive and space realm, you're already running that stuff. But you can incorporate drive and space concepts like the button hook, the escape cut, um, the penetrate pitch post. That's um, so why, why when I had Doug come on for a clinic, he talked about what he didn't like about just pure dribble drive was he felt that it was a middle penetration offense. Um, I'm, I've been employing some of these the last couple seasons. And I'm going to show you, before I show the video, what we did to really get into the penetrate and pitch post. So our best player my past two seasons at my previous job was our four, was our four player. And she was a six-foot six foot perimeter player. But what we would do with her is we would either run fan or fingers. So... One to four, we're just going to say we're corner cutting her. So three comes up. So one's here, three's here, four's here, five, two. So when four, now four, your best player has the ball with a triple gap to her strong hand. So we like that. So this gave her an opportunity to go score it. Okay. If she didn't and she got stopped, she would play pitch and now her second option would be post and a lot of times she was being guarded by a smaller player so now we have two with the ball four five three one three so we got a big gap towards the middle we still have the ability to drive baseline because we're going to have escape cut rules so now if she if she fed the post, she would cut through or split split action with the three or relocate to the corner. So a lot of times we would like her to like come set like this stuff and then dive to keep the single cover so she wouldn't get doubled. So if she doesn't have the pass in there and two caught caught it on a bad closeout or red drive. 
So it would be that. That would be your natural flow into dribble drive. If she went baseline, you would you would escape over. So it's just teaching your players to read the penetration. So you're getting a little bit more penetrated and posting and then reading off the dribble. So you're not they're not getting a beat on always going middle off this kick up. So let, let's let's look at a little game film. We've got a few clips here and Let's take a peek here. Um, this was this was Doug running it at uh, Mississippi State a couple years ago. So they're a team in white. So here we go. We got we got the player at the nail. Okay, she stuck with this player, so she had drive. And they still got into their normal action. Okay. There's a kick. Okay. And we're going to go back through these. Here we go. And I have a quick action here. So there it is. Both players sunk in. And you're going to see this a lot. Because natural reaction is to double the ball if it's in the paint. 9-1-1 situation. So now that's read shot or close out. So she read shot or drive, shoot it or shoot it or drive it, which we're all trying to teach. Shoot it, drive it, move it. Okay. Another one. Sunk them both in. Okay. Read close out. She re she sprinted back to space. And now we got a two on one in dominoes on the backside. Saw this clip a little earlier, okay. And now here is just simple quick action. From Southeastern Oklahoma a few years ago, coach there is now at a D1 school and is escaping me which school she's at. Okay, so there, here's your three players on the weak side. And a post. See, the post is screening the player inside of her, and now they're reacting to the penetration. So, again, it was just elevate, pass, and go opposite. So, now she has a choice to drive over the top middle or rip it baseline. And in these situations, this is a great no middle attack. So, you could rip it baseline, and now you should have a tee up option, which the post is getting there. The corner drift player is cutting along the baseline, which is okay. And then you've got a, you're going to have a skip slot. So they, they're going to hit a skip slot, and look how far of a closeout this is. So, so those are just a little bit of adjustments to add to your to your dribble drive. Um, so I'm going to check the comments here, see if there's any questions going on. Okay, don't see anything. All right. So, well, hope you guys enjoyed that. If you got any questions, drop them in the comments, send me an email, and hope to, hope to be doing a little bit more of these in the next few months as our seasons get going. And you guys have any questions about the dribble drive, um, uh, put them in the hoop talk group or send me an email. Thanks guys for joining me tonight. Hopefully, hopefully,